Okay, we're back at SiliconAngle.com's The Cube, our flagship program. We've got the event to extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle. We are at Strata Conference in Silicon Valley, and I'm here with Bruno Aziza. That's correct. From C-Sense. Uh, we've, uh, C-Sense. C-Sense? C-Sense. 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 <laughs> C-Sense. <laughs> the startups, so you guys are, have news today. You're on Venture Beats front yeah. page. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, welcome to The Cube again. Last year at Strata, only a few months ago, you yeah. had the tats on and uh, yeah. doing, doing the awareness. So yeah. let's give the update. What's going on with the company? Tell us what's happening real quick and then we'll jump into quick commentary. That sounds good. So there's no tattoos this time, at least in none places that you can see. So since then, you know, at, at, at Strata, we talked about uh, the one terabyte on the $1,000 machine. And you know, we, we're a, a new startup. We've been in the market about 18 months now. We've got about 400 plus customers. And so really the news has been going out and it's been growing like, like crazy. And uh, we, of course, you've read a lot of the coverage, but we've also uh, acquired lots of new customers and, and lots of people that are interested in finding out why yeah. is this technology different? What's, what's different about it? And what can I do that I couldn't do with earlier uh, big data analytics solutions? Great, so, so let me ask you a question first before we get into it. What do you think about uh, Strata this year? What's your, what's your take on so far, obviously it's day one, uh, it's, just, it's the quiet day, tomorrow's going to be yeah. a bigger day, but you know, obviously the, there's some big moves by the big money players, EMC. Yeah. Yeah. So what's your take on what EMC's doing, Green Plum? Well, you know, I don't know that I should comment on EMC in particular, but what I do Why see, um, you know, because uh, you know, I'm not informed enough about what their <laughs> strategy is, and you know, I'd rather talk about what I'm working on. Um, but what, what is interesting about the movement in general uh, is it's growing like crazy. I mean, you know, I've always been a believer in, in Strata, the movement. I think it's a different uh, conference. You see lots of people that are really deep in the technology, yeah. and we need that. Last uh, night, I was at the Unconference, so I did a, a little lightning talk, and, and my CTO had a, a 45 minute session that we, and you could see how much people really get the technology, and they're eager to understand what we can do now with hardware evolution and software. It, it seems like in the past, we talked a lot about software evolution, and now people are getting, uh, you know, starting to understand that hardware evolution, particularly on the CPU um, and and uh, and memory hierarchies, you can crunch a lot more data than you could in the past. So that's so encouraging. In, in terms of the major trends that you're seeing out there that affect your business, what are they? So there's a few a few trends. The first one is what I call the commoditization of uh, big data. Uh, and by that, I mean that any person is now is going to be running with terabytes of data on their machine, on their local server. And so we have lots and lots of data that the average person has access to. And so that's number one. And, and today, there aren't a lot of user-friendly tools that allow people to work with that. The second one is what I call consumerization of big. So one of them is commoditization, and the other one is consumerization, which is customers are asking that uh, they get access to software enterprise software that is more like consumer grade. And so what that means is, in our case, for instance, they want software that does everything from A to Z. You know, today when you work with big data, you have to buy a database, you have to buy an ETL platform, you have to buy visualization tools. That's expensive, it's complicated, it takes time. Customers don't have the tolerance for that. And that's why you know, I think we're getting a lot of success is we're optimized for their hardware. It's one solution for the database, ETL, and visualization. And so it makes it super easy for them to get started. And that's really what we need to do next is, it's a big data thing, we've been talking about it, but we've got to be careful that it's not just for the experts and the few, it has to be for the 600 million users out there that are dealing with data on the daily so basis. So obviously on, the tw on Twitter, we're watching all the tr attraction you have with um, your, your demo. Um, yeah, it says it's a record, yeah. C-Sense, uh, 10 by 10 by 10 challenge, shatters records at Strata, big data conference, analyzes 10 terabytes of data in 10 seconds on a $10,000 machine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just take us, that's impressive, congratulations. Thank what you. What does that mean? What is that, so what, what kind of benchmark are you running? Yeah. Because remember, Green Plum's making a lot of claims. Sure, and, uh, absolutely. And 100 times performance over Impala, but Impala is 100 times more, more performance over Hadoop. Yeah. So I'm just, so know, what people want to know the math. So the, the benchmark that we're, we're measuring ourselves against is, okay, so now you're in a situation as a customer and you have terabytes of data. And we're not talking petabytes here. We're just talking about the most common situation that customers have, which is terabytes of data. And today the solution is you need probably 20, 40 Hadoop nodes to equate this performance. And you might not actually be able to produce what, the well, what's the What's the benchmark on the data? What kind of data is it? So it's uh, data coming from multiple data sources, you know that. Structured data? No, it's structured and unstructured data. So, so, 
So it's a little bit of both. You know, if you look at our technology, we connect to about 80% of the world's data. So it could be Hive, it could be a file. Yeah, because you guys are pulling in multiple sources. You're doing like the data mashup. That's the, so that's the number one. So your 10 terabytes, just so we get, before we get into the, to the yeah. weeds and the math, the 10 terabytes is mix of different types of data. Correct. Okay, not one. No, no, no one transformation, simple file copied No transformation, things. SQL, boosted up. No, 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 no. This no. is so real workload. That's correct. Type data. That's workload, okay, that's good. a real life scenario that a customer would run into. Okay, so good. bring 10 terabytes. Of course we have, our technology offers compression and we do optimization of, of the data. Mm -hmm. So by the time it gets to the analysis phase, it's, it's compressed, right? So it's a lot smaller by the time we crunch it. That's, that's why we can crunch it much faster. Uh, but what we're trying to replicate is a typical scenario that a customer would, would experience. So the first piece of the technology is this high performance analytical database we call the Elastic Cube. That's part of the solution. The second piece this, uh, this solution does is it brings in the data and does automatic ETL. So we detect the relationship between tables, we do that automatically. So the end user doesn't even have to understand what a join is. That's the idea. And then the, the additional value on top of that is that we have visualizations uh, that are web-based, HTML5, JavaScript. You can also uh, extend that with D3 libraries. And once you build these dashboards on top of this data, you can now query this at amazing pace. You know, one of the things that people don't think about when they design dashboards on large data sets like that is that the typical dashboard has five, six different queries running at the same time. So when you look at other vendors and you say, yeah, I can run this in three seconds. Yeah, you can do that on one query. But what happens if you have 500 users running five, quer five queries at the same time? Most tools choke. And what we're trying to show is that on one Dell server, you can do this and never choke. Got it, so okay, so now let's take that to one step further. How, yeah. do, you, how do you translate out to scale? So in, in, in your conversations with customers. Yeah. So it's a great demo, shows the, yeah. the speeds and feeds like doing a lap around the track. Yeah. One lap, really fast. Yeah. What, how does that scale into? What are you guys seeing in terms of the, some of the concepts with the customers? So most of the, the customers we're, we're talking with, it's actually interesting, they don't think about the, they don't, think it, they don't measure their data by saying, well, it's five billion rows and 10 terabytes only. The problem that they have is they actually don't know how qu quickly the data is going to grow. And so what we tell them is like, you know, think about it differently. We're going to take a look at your entire data set. We're not going to sample your data. We're not going to try and limit you in your analysis. What we want to do is we want you to not even have to think about how quickly your data is going to grow and have a solution that's going to scale with you. So this is one node. You could have multiple nodes just like this one and scale to unlimited um, uh, environments if you, if you wanted to. But that's, that's the mega point here is it's simple to deploy. It's one solution that does everything from the database to the visualization, and it's something where you don't have to worry about data growth, which in traditional deployments, that's the first thing people ask you. I mean, if you, if, if, uh, you went to most of the vendors out there, and you said, look, I've got this data, what's the first thing they'll tell you? Give me a sample. We don't tell our customers, give me a sample. We tell them, give me your entire data. You know, why, why would you have a bottleneck at the analysis yeah, level? Yeah. And that's our approach. So let's talk about you and the company right now, because obviously when yeah. we first met and you moved out from Microsoft, yeah. um, you're very dynamic. Great, <laughs> Thank great, you, I'm passionate. Uh, great <laughs> passion, <laughs> passion's key, and you're doing a, uh, a lot of stuff at scale, which, yeah. is, which is my uh, kind of my test for someone doing some cool stuff. So tell us about um, some of the things that have happened for you guys in the past yeah. year. Obviously, we saw you at Strata last year, getting a lot of awareness, got the big project here. Yeah. What big things have you guys done, and what have you seen out in the marketplace that yeah. has got you fired up? So there's, there's so a you, what you're doing, and yeah. then something not you're doing that you're excited about in the market. Yeah, so there's, there's been a, a few things. Uh, first of all, I think when we saw each other uh, in New York, we were just barely talking about what size, I mean, we had done zero marketing. And so since then, you know, I mean, I can't give you numbers on traffic and things like that, but it's been, we've had amazing demand in terms of customers, interest, people coming to us. You know, I think when you, you, you're, you start a company like this, most people are trying to understand, well first what do you do and what do I come to you for? And so now we have a much larger level of awareness from customers coming in and we have even people from the industry coming to ask us what our opinion is on the industry. So I think it's a great sign that we're now doing a good job at explaining what we do and the types of, of situations we, we, we help customers with. Uh, we've seen lots of very cool stuff in multiple areas. I think last time uh, we met, I was telling you about uh, how large companies are deploying the software. And we actually now start seeing people all over the, the, the gap. I mean, you got people like Target that are using it to do um, uh, theft detection. So they're mashing up data and they're trying to figure out 
uh, you know, theft issues and so forth. And you got smaller companies like uh, Wix or Plastic Jungle. Wix is a website platform. They have 29 million users. Um, and they don't have a 100 people data team. They have like three guys. And they're able to use their software to crunch through this massive amount of data where they do behavior analytics to improve their, their software. I think that's really cool. That's what I see the most is that people now are starting to understand that there's two things going on. One is data is their product. So when you're Wix, it's the data that you have about your users that are going to help you build a better product. And you have to really be able to crunch that in real time because the slower you are, the more the competition is going to catch up on you and they're going to know better how your users are, are using this data. And then secondly, we have people like WeFi is a, is a company that does um, mobile hotspots. They have millions of users out there and they can tell you the status of a, uh, of a phone uh, in a particular area and so forth. And they use our software to crunch through large amounts of data to go back to the telco providers and tell them this is the quality in this particular area and so forth. So real-time scenarios, large scale, and small teams, which is I think is great. I think it's a great sign that we're evolving to making this thing really complicated to something that anybody can do. That's really the opportunity. And I think the, I think the interesting thing is the small teams. I mean, you're seeing kind of agile kind of yeah. mindset come into a lot of the big data space where, you know, um, we were at the uh, Green Palm event and uh, Harper from the Obama administration up there. Yeah. He, his big thing was team, data, software. Yeah. And um, I like that. I like that concept because it kind of works, and that's the most effective. When you start to get the bigger teams bureaucracy, agendas yep. start kicking in. So I, I, li I like that, I think I would agree with you. But I want to ask you also about your view of the cloud because I yep. think what you guys are doing that's interesting that yep. I like is, um, I've always been impressed with the idea that you're bringing in multiple data sets, yeah. which gives you flexibility. Yep. You're not locked into, say, a data warehousing model where, hey, I have certain queries, yep. I'm going to run these SQLs, I want to make them run fast. That's an old paradigm. Yep. The new paradigm is spreading resources around the network, having a data platform, but dealing with multiple data sources. Yeah. And Intel was talking about that today. So, so um, when you talk to customers, is it a foreign concept? When you talk about multiple data sets? No. Um, no, are they like, hey, welcome, so thank you for coming, you know? No, we need you. <laughs> no, it, there has been a disconnect in the past where the uh, older generations assume that, well, you've got multiple data sources. By the way, the average company has six to 10 different data sources. So every company you talk to, you have a Google spreadsheet and some other data source, you're just dying to be able to mesh up, you can't yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. And so I think what you're describing is mainstream. The issue has been that most vendors have approached customers and have told them, no problem, the way you solve that is you call IT, build a data warehouse, and we'll talk to you in 18 months so we can analyze this data. That is not the reality. Customers do not tolerate this at, at all. What they want is, I just want to download something and magically my data works for me. And so that's the scenario we walk into. I think the other evolution that's happening is, and I agree with your comment on hardware, I'm sorry, on software, I think it's also the evolution of hardware and how it plays with software. So obviously in memory um, and 64-bit you know, has been a great evolution, but now what's going on is that people are actually realizing, you know what, RAM is actually slow. Why? Because CPU and L1 cache, I don't want to get too literal, in, in, will provide much bigger performance improvement. And that's all in your machine. I mean, the environment, the reason why we showed this is because most people running software on environments today, they are underutilizing the power that they have in their own hands. And we need to stop that because otherwise you're going to be spooling hundreds of servers and you're going to be using 10% of capacity. I, I equate this to the brain. Yeah. You know, we have this gigantic brain, 400 billion data sets that we can, but in the end, it, our brain looks like this. We're using 10% of it because we don't have the, the analytics for it. And well, we I mean, that. We're, we're big fans of startups, especially ones that are kind of breaking the barrier in terms of value proposition, bringing value to customers. Um, Cloud-based products and services are obviously emerging. I didn't tell and, you my opinion and, on cloud, I guess. And I want to <laughs> get that as the final question to you because obviously, you know, the future is, is going to be, and yeah. the puck is going to where everyone's skating, yeah. uh, so to speak, <coughs> to cloud-based and services that create business value. Yep. So not just make the horse and buggy go faster, that's the data warehousing model, put yeah. some cheap Hadoop on it, and you have cheap data warehousing. Yeah. Everyone's going towards a, a platform for data. Yeah. And so business value is the, is the conversation. Yeah, they want the speeds now, but they don't want to foreclose that business value. So final yeah. comment on cloud and services. So there are two things that we see on cloud. The first one is data in the cloud, and I think you talked about that. Uh, Primarily, I think it's going to be driven by people that have applications in the cloud already. So if you have Salesforce, you have Google, that's easy. 
porting your on-prem data into the cloud, that is a nightmare. Uh, it costs you more money, uh, and it's difficult to convince customers because typically the data that they have on-prem is business critical, and the reason why they don't want to move it to the cloud is because it is business critical. So you end up moving data in the cloud that is not business critical, which I don't think you want to be in that situation. That's comment number one on the data in the cloud. Second comment of data infrastructure in the cloud, I think that's a big play because again, it simplifies how people get started with this field. We just announced, so uh, our software can be deployed on-prem, on Amazon Cloud, and we just added Windows Azure Cloud. And the reason for that is because you know, our mission is, how do we make this super easy? How do you provision a machine out there, install the software, and just get started? And so I think infrastructure in the cloud has a much bigger potential than actually data in the cloud by itself. Yeah, Unless you're talking about open data I, or data markets. Well, no, moving data around is expensive, right? So, yeah. and, and transforming of data is expensive. So yeah. I think you got the right approach. Yeah. Uh, Bruno, we're getting the time hook here. Uh, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Uh, is it C-Sense? Sci-Sense. Sci -Sense. Um, I always get that wrong. <laughs> it's an East Coast thing. Um, Our product is Prism. Maybe that's easier <laughs> to pronounce. I love the Elastic Cube because we are the cube. This is Silicon <laughs> Angles, the cube. We are Elastic. Um, this is Silicon Angles uh, coverage of Strata Conference. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Uh, stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you.